Hello and welcome everybody to 2002. Do you remember what was going on? What were you doing in 2002? I remember for me, it was very much watching TV, like American Idol. It's like Kelly Clarkson, so emotional. It's like, we love you, Kelly Clarkson, the winner of American Idol. And J-Lo was huge. I remember back then, Nora Jones came out with her Come Away With Me song, suddenly like, all the, like I was in college, all the college kids were like, yeah, we're down with smooth jazz now. Like We like this like light jazz. You know, it was 2002. So, Sonar Tech. It's a company that sounds like they should be making like submarine equipment, but they're not. They're making golf equipment. Founded in 1999, 2001, they had their first PGA win. And then by 2003 and four, shortly after these came out, it was just like, these are the best fairway woods ever. And, you know, there. I remember there were people who were still like, no, the steelheads are better. The steelheads are better. They're not as flat. And they came out with hybrids and then kind of didn't quite meet market demand. So kind of defunct. But Sonar Tech, do you guys remember these things? Let's get this on the review table and have a closer look. So these are stainless steel and you can see clearly marked Sonar Tech driving cavity model SS01. This is a three wood US patented loft 15 degrees and there is this shape, this shape in the sole cavity, right? Nike would never copy this on a driver, would they? <laughs> it just cracks me up. All right, you can see a pretty shallow face here. It's right side up, unlike Adam's, which is upside down. We spin around the skirt, we can see just this glossy black paint, nothing on the toe here. We have one, two, three, four, five grooves. That's it. Painted hosel right here, you can see the serial number. Black ferrule, kind of a metal flake black shaft right here. Fujigora uh, Vista Pro 50, regular flex. You can see, oh, here's your sine wave right here. I have no idea what that is. Some sort of frequency thing. I put this on here, uh, 2002 was I suspect when this one was made, but they, I think they started production in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. Again, leave comments in the comments below. Uh, I put a wrap on here. This is just a, you can see, golf pride, velvet cord grip underneath here. It's seen better days. So this has already been to the simulator. So let's roll that footage. Look at this Sonar Tech 2003 the definition of the modern three wood. Is that true? I don't know. Looking down at it, I mean, no complaint, the grip's fine. The look is good, because it's just black shaft, black furl, black crown, and the face looks plenty long, deep enough. It kind of reminds me of the size of an Adams Tidelize three wood, just right side up that makes sense. You guys seen the marketing. Uh, but yeah, it looks great. I mean, my ping seems like it's has a more surface area on the top. It seems more extended towards the aft portion. But no complaints about the looks. Let's see how it performs. We will see. Usually, that one felt very slicey. Usually, I'm looking for a little fade. That's way too much. Uh, and the carry is a little short. So with a three wood off the deck, I would like it to carry more than 215, 225. Uh, roll out to, you know, two, 230s, 245 kind of total distance. So my problem right now, you can see the attack angle, 0.8. That means I'm swinging up at it. That's a problem with me, not the club. The club feels amazing. It's not too loud either. I was just thinking about my attack angle and nothing else. Oh, I'll spin even more up at that. Again, fairy woods are not my strength. Okay, same thing. Slight fade, negative attack angle. Those are my goals here. Was close on that one. Still working on my swing. All right, I'll give you guys one more here, but the club is performing. You can see the smash back. You can see everything. The club's amazing. Ah, okay. 
Come on, John. You got this. Negative two. All right. Maybe I overcompensated just a little bit. But yeah, great numbers. I mean, those are like my ping numbers. So, I mean, do I feel like I'm at a loss? I mean, is it less forgiving or controlled? That was on me. If you look at the club data, I'm sure that's my club face uh, closed pulling that. So, yeah, the club itself is amazing. Should I hit one off the tee for kicks and giggles? Let's hit one off the tee where I'm justified in swinging up at it. I need some wins today. Okay, nice and relaxed. Three wood off the tee. For safety, right? That's what you do. See, look, my tack angle is perfect now. It's <laughs> oh, Dolly carry 206. A little high on the face. Either way, great, great fun. Let's go. Let us know your thoughts and comments in the com thoughts and memories in the comments below. So this feels like a three wood. It feels like a fairway wood. It feels good. It feels like something from the 2000s, like an Adams fairway wood, you know, the upside down ones, or various others around this time. Now, is that enough? So from an engineering standpoint, yes, absolutely. Okay, so if you're talking about hitting golf balls, yes, this one on the PGA Tour, not this club, the player used this club to win. So it's perfectly capable, okay? That's not up for discussion as far as I'm concerned. Capable golf club. What's up for discussion is, would you buy this and put this in your bag? Do you build your, now I know people who do this, do you build your set around your fairway woods? Because I know very few people, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I know anybody personally that has to match their fairway wood to their driver or anything else. It's usually just they have their favorite fairway wood and then they have their latest and greatest driver and then they have their set of irons which they trust and they have a completely and putters are kind of standalone right I don't know anybody who builds a set around their putter uh, yeah I don't know yeah so putters and fairway woods are like exempt from this like let's build a set around this so would I buy this does this and that's what this channel is about right we will identify something. We'll talk about the year it was manufactured. Uh, these fairway woods were manufactured from about 2001 to 2004 is when they, they, they boomed in popularity and a little bit beyond that. So this club, does it do it for you? And everybody will be different. There will be people out there who say, yes, this is that X factor. This gives me the confidence and I have memories with it and I love this club. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's, I 100% get it. I have clubs where people are just like, why do you like those clubs? They're not that amazing. So yes, okay. But to me, this is a hot air balloon used for transportation. Well, nobody uses hot air balloons for transportation. Yes, thank you, all right. So it doesn't matter where on the list it is. Okay, I have fairy woods that I love. For example, the TaylorMade V-Steel, the Callaway Steelhead, maybe a couple others with future videos pending, okay? So this to me, it doesn't matter like for transportation, okay? I'm gonna take my most exciting car I can any chance I get. It doesn't matter if it's the bus or the subway or a hot air balloon, all of those. It doesn't matter if it's first, second, third, fourth, seat, do you see what I'm saying? Or a hot air balloon, I'm not gonna take that. I'm not going to ride those other forms of transportation. I'm not dissing those other forms of transportation. I rode the bus a lot in college, right? Public transportation. You get on the bus, it takes you to where you're going. You're squared away. It does its job. You get point A, point B, done. It was efficient. No problems. But if it's number two on your list and you have your number one, it could be Uber. Okay, let's say you Uber somewhere. Then all those other forms of transportation are just, it doesn't matter what order they're in. That's what this, it doesn't matter what order. Is this your third favorite, fourth favorite, fifth favorite, sixth favorite, hundredth favorite fairway wood? It doesn't matter because it's not going in your bag. That's where I'm at with it. So to me, this is probably, when I, when I first saw these, they were like, whoa, those look awesome. They could be my number one. But now that I've hit lots of these clubs, this is probably in my top 10, eight or nine, but it's down low enough where in the 2000s, I'm not gonna have eight or nine sets and try to shoehorn this into them. 
Just my thoughts. Sonar tech, hot air balloon, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to join us on Patreon, just a dollar a month, we have some behind the scenes pictures, videos, updates. You can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. I'm gonna to try to update that Amazon shop before this video airs. And if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and like the video if you enjoy it. I am The Vintage Golfer. Thank you for watching.